uh, okay uh, i've done this video on motion of a vehicle along a curved path right so we are uh, looking at a vehicle a four wheeler which is moving along a curved path as you can see in this diagram so this is a curved path a circular path along which uh, this particular trailer is uh, moving right and this is a this is a, a, a flat road meaning that you know uh, th this edge as well as this edge are on the same line that means there's no banking provided in this road so it's a plain flat road on which this particular vehicle is taking a turn and it is trying to move along the path a b c right so we're looking to going to look at uh, the what happens to the various forces and velocity of this vehicle while it is taking this turn so uh, we have this vehicle which is trying to move along the curved path a b c right this is the width of the road this is the entire width of the road and it is taking a turn like this and the radius of this particular circle is r right this is the image this is the imaginary center right this can be considered as a part of a circle whose center is c and radius is r right now what happens is while this particular vehicle is taking this turn due to inertia it has a tendency to move along a straight line so if i draw that over here what uh, happens actually is that this has a tendency to move along the tangent over here straight so Uh, this is the direction in which the vehicle has a tendency to move. Let us call this D, right? So when it is at location B, when or whenever it is at any location, right, it has a tendency to go in a straight line, right? But uh, the frictional force comes into play and it applies a force towards the center of the circle and makes this vehicle take a turn. So there's a there's a frictional force which uh, provides a centripetal force to make this vehicle take a turn so i can show the centripetal force or the frictional force which comes into play and that particular force is directed towards the center of the circle so it is directed along this line right and this is the frictional force or centripetal force so the, f the force causes this vehicle to take the turn and move along path bc right now as the speed of the vehicle increases, uh, a larger centripetal force is required, right? And therefore, the frictional force increases, right? But there's a limit, to the, there's a maximum limit to the frictional force, right? The maximum frictional force that can come into play is F max. F max is equal to, F max is equal to mu, mu s into r right where mu s is the static friction between uh, this the wheels and the road and r is equal to mg so the maximum frictional force that can be provided is mu s r right and this will be mu s m g where m is the mass of the vehicle therefore the maximum centripetal force that can be provided is mu s mg because centripetal force is being provided by the frictional force now if i take the maximum centripetal force so maximum let me denote it by fc maximum centripetal force will be mu s mg right and we know that fc is equal to m v square by r right therefore i can write down m v square by r is equal to mu s mg right now in this case this velocity is the maximum velocity with which the vehicle may hand move because this is the maximum frictional force that can be provided so this is the maximum velocity so i'll write over here i'll pro put a suffix v max right if the speed of the vehicle increases beyond this then the frictional force is not sufficient to provide centripetal force and the object and the vehicle will have a tendency to skid along this particular path right so I, with this formula i can get the maximum speed with which the vehicle can travel so that it is able to take this turn uh, safely right so this will give me v max square upon r is equal to mu s g and therefore i get v max is equal to square root of mu s r into g so this decides the maximum speed of the vehicle so that it is able to negotiate this turn without skidding right and you can very clearly see over here that the maximum speed depends upon the coefficient of static friction and radius r right so if this if the if there's more friction on this road then what happens is that you know the vehicle is able to travel with larger speed similarly if uh, the radius is larger if the radius is larger then 
the vehicle can travel with larger speed uh, all of us have experienced this when we are driving we're traveling on the highway what happens is that when the vehicle is about to take a take a turn right when it is going to move along a curved path we see generally that the vehicle has a tendency to go along the outer uh, on the outer edge of the road right generally vehicles travel along this particular path right the reason why they do that is because with that r increases r increases you can see here r is increased and if r increases v max increases that means it is able to travel with a larger speed and uh, this is what we generally experience on the highways uh, i hope uh, this uh, video will help you understand and make connections to what you have experienced uh, real in real life while uh, driving on the highways with your parents right and next time when you are driving with your parents on the highway just try to take make a note of this that how vehicles go along the outer edge of the road while they are taking a turn or what they do is they reduce the speed right? they reduce the speed so that they are able to move along the shorter radius right and the other thing that we observe is that if the road is wet if the road is wet then what happens is that the mu s decreases and in that case you see drivers reducing their speeds because mu s has decreased and the maximum allowable speed decreases therefore to ensure that they don't skid in a straight line they reduce the speed so that able to they are able to safely negotiate this curve right thank you